of course, is going to be the first one to go. That's always the typical. So far, LGD are 100% win rate when they get this champion. And there's no surprises there. That's going to go through. I'm a bit surprised, though, it's not Thresh. Sometimes you see when Thresh is left open that that is what the first pick ends up being, holding off on the jungler. But I think it's like you said, they're far more confident when they have that Hecarim, especially 11-5. It feels like Hecarim is the premier jungler. While Udyr, Olaf, Lilia, they remain there. It is really all about building around a Hecarim. Yeah, it has been. Hecarim has been incredibly dominant. He has a lot of burst damage in his first gank, and his teamfight potential, I think, is the best out of any jungler that we have right now. The ability to go into the back lines is absolutely devastating, and OMG, like we're talking about, they are the ones to actually pick up the Thresh. I, I felt like Thresh was incredibly important in these two team matchups, because Eric also trends towards hyper carries as well, and if you have Thresh, it, it, it means that it's actually pretty hard to ban out all of the AD carries. You can either go Aphelios, you can either go Jinx, like a lot of people are doing, you keep your uh, options open, and if they really want to take it away, they have to force two bans. So, that's always a strong play. Um, I'm glad that they're going for it. Lilia, again, a champion that's up for the chopping board on 11.6. Just a great farming jungler that can keep the same pace as Hecarim is holding. And that forces LGD, I think, onto a different path. Um, because if OMG already have the Thresh, they're going to go hyper carry. And for LGD, that means that you don't really want to contest them in the 5v5 late game. So Kai'Sa is one of those other options that you could potentially go for. It has high assassination potential, and it also allows for a more skirmishing-oriented team style. So you don't have to run into OMG uh, with the sort of same comp, but worse. As Nar is actually going to be joining Kai'Sa picked up by LGD. A bit surprised to see that they want to go for that for Cult so early, though Nar is considered one of the top top laners in the current meta. Can be countered a bit, but it's not really like it's out of the ordinary too much. It's just something a bit more surprising if that Jinx, though, where Eric, you were talking about the hyper carries. This is going to be an interesting adaptation from OMG, even though, like you mentioned, Eric does play these hyper carries too. Yeah, this is, uh, this is taking away from Kramer. <laughs> That's exactly what I think he's doing. Recently, Kramer has been having very good games on the Jinx. He just won an MVP in the series versus Rare Adam, going nine kills and only two deaths and 11 assists to boot. So you want to take away the best champion from LGD. And I, I like what OMG are doing, essentially. Uh, so far, LGD has really only been successful on a select composition of Hecarim and Jinx. So if you break that away, then it forces them to go into unfamiliar territory. I think what LGD are currently drafting is a little bit more skirmish based. Um, they can follow up the Onslaught of Shadows with something like the Killer Instincts to just instantly assassinate your backline. And we are gonna see a more dynamic draft come out from uh, LGD. Currently, we still have a lot of very strong pick supports on the table, like the Rel, as I say that instantly banned away. So I, I do expect uh, LGD to go for something like either Gragas or Leona and to be able to catch out backlines. Both of those champions have a great ability to just make Jinx sort of obsolete. You can't fly onto her with Solar Flare, or you can just take her out of position, as Lirimao has done a lot of times with that explosive cast. As Scion gets locked in for new to go up into Colt's Nar. Not too surprising to see that they want to hold off on that last pick for mid lane. We mentioned before that that's kind of the strategy that uh, OMG have been able to utilize for Ooming, especially as of late, that have been able to get them a couple upset wins. True, but the question is, what do you go here? It's a very AP-focused jungler already, and Ooming so far hasn't shown a lot of AD picks. His best champions, as we've mentioned, he actually played the most of out of anyone in the LPL, have been that Zoe and LeBlanc. That would be some decent counter to the Azir, but I feel like their damage profile might be a bit, uh, a bit odd off skilter right here. I, I wonder if they're actually going to go with that. Uh, typically, you don't look to get advantages if you're running double APs in the mid jungle. So I actually don't mind something like the... Oh, Tristana would be a really good pick. Like we're talking about, they need something that's AD. And this is taking a page away from LGD. They now have a great scaling composition. Double AD hyper carries going in with strong lane presence in both uh, both the, the bottom lane and in the mid lane. And this is a great team fighting comp as well. So I, I really like what OMG's draft has done here. It's incredibly strong. And for LGD side, uh, Nautilus really wouldn't be my pick of choice. <laughs> I, I'd much prefer something like the Leona or something like the Gragas. Um, but 
you know, a hook champion. This is a much stronger, I would say, level two all in, just because yes. of the dredge line and sort of the riptide slow that can come in. But if you don't make that happen, then I, I, I do prefer the Leona picks here. Yeah, that's what I was even gonna ask. It seemed like the side of LGD were indexing far more to play around the bottom side trying to make sure that Eric and Cold aren't going to be able to get this Jinx online into a position where they're going to feel as confident. But that also probably means OMG are going to play around bot side as well, right? Yeah, yeah. OMG for sure. If you look at their comp right now, their two main advantages is probably the uh, mid lane matchup between Trisana and Azir. We have seen the way this interaction works. If Trisana can get the jump behind Azir, it's actually very hard for the Azir to escape. He can't shifting Sands <laughs> back away from you. You will cut off his path. And that initial jump has a 60% slow attached to it. So there's a lot of kill potential. We should be expecting the Hallow Blades exactly as we go into here. And uh, for me, this is mainly gonna come down to a, whether LGD can find a kill in the bot side, or B, can OMG get Ooming going with his last pick? Well, they're gonna certainly try here as we load up onto the rift. Game one in week nine, day three, between LGD and OMG. I'm excited to see if we're gonna have Ooming get ahead on this Tristana. The crowds cheering, ready. Excited to see that there are still teams holding out hope for OMG, you know. Still got the signs out there, still rooting for them. Like I said, they're really planning to play spoilers here against LGD and deny them that miracle that they so desperately hope in the late season. But, you know, my heart believes in LGD, even though I do like a good spoil or two. I still want to see Ooh. if they might even be able to have the chance. OMG, going for this late invade. This completely spotted out by Quay. It's gonna be the trade of the Raptors. I don't know if OMG can get much more out of this. It's a pretty common tactic that we're seeing coming in from the Lilia because she can clear Raptors incredibly fast. And what this also does is prevent the level two all in coming in from Kramer and Chance. It makes it a lot harder if you know that that jungler is on your side of the map. So great move from OMG. They're gonna force vertical jungling against a kill lane from LGD. And that's exactly what they wanna do. They wanna make sure Jinx can get to that late game Ooh. without being disrupted. Look at the pings. That's just gonna be Aki, not even splitting the map, trying to three buff Quay mm. completely. Take away this Hecarim's ability to do anything in the early game. Yeah, sweet move coming out here. Also a very common move, red buff Lilia just moving towards the red side of the map. And Quay is in a bit of a pickle. Right now with his yep. HP bar, he can't really go onto the other side of the map. There's no way that he's gonna cross map, contest the blue buff. And I, I think what we need to see is LGD absolutely 100% need some way to sec secure this top lane scuttle or else it's just going to be Aki just running away with the experience advantage. But honestly, even with that, you can see the pathing coming in from Quay. He's trying to get some experience regardless since it's going to be quite some time until those scuttle crabs spawn up. So he's got to go down to the Krugs to get a little bit to get a little bit more experience gold as well. Which means you're now on the bottom side of the map. You are going to try to see if you can fight against Aki around this, unless you can make a play in the spot lane. Nice hook comes in with the dredge line, but it's going to be the play for Cold Flashes away as well. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to get any more. It's just going to be the three summoners out of OMG. So, Quay goes back to the drawing board. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I like that play from Quay. It was a very risky one. He shows his position, and this means that Aki's going to get double scuttle. I, I would have much more yep. preferred him trying to get at least one scuttle. Um, but now with him showing on the bottom side of the map, Lilia and Tristana can come and contest this next Raptor camp, and they can also just move topside with the mid lane priority to go for scuttle. So oh, look at this. Uh, mid -lane, that's going to be a lane triple priority? camp advantage. Oh man, this is not looking good for Quay. Quay, you gotta bail out of that one. You have no priority. Even with the dredge line, you know, boy, trying to see if he can show up, but you can already see on the minimap that Cold's gonna be getting here pretty soon with the hope of a lantern. I can't flash over, but there's so much damage. First blood goes over to Uming. Reset gonna be able City. to jump away with a rock jump. 
Not even gonna be cut off from the path, unless, of course, you're gonna have Kramer show up right place, right time. Has a good amount of damage. Oh, Might be able to get one. Aki. There it is. Uniboy's gonna be able to get the buff for himself. Zooming's got nowhere to go either. Had to flash, but still dies to Kramer over on the other side of the wall. But Cold barely limping away. The flash comes in. Uniboy trying to slow him down just enough. They've got the soldiers in place. There's gonna be a double kill for Kramer with Eric running back to the turret. LGD, they do end up punishing for that invade. Yeah, that was a great play from LGD. The main difference here is that Chance actually roamed up a lot quicker than the Thresh did. It was a beautiful concave on the side of LGD where they had OMG completely surrounded. And I'll, I'll be honest, I felt like OMG had the correct play. They saw the positioning from Quay. They know that he doesn't have Ghost. And they are going for what I believe is the superior play here. But that support roam, if they just waited a little bit more until their Thresh and Jinx could have joined the fight, this would have been a clean win from OMG. The game would have been 100% over. But now LGD with those two kills onto Kramer and Kai'Sa, uh, that just means that their kill bottom lane win condition is now fully online. Exactly. It's just it's a bit rough for OMG. Like you said, they needed to pull up cold way quicker if they wanted this play to work. Yeah, and they, they actually had the inner track as well. So that's what hurts, especially for me, is like uh, as a coach, I see this play from OMG. I'm, I'm rubbing my palms. I'm going like, yes, yes, this is exactly what should happen. And they just they just kind of ham fisted it. They threw it a little bit later. Um, it's really a, a huge waste. And what this actually means is I think Kramer with the extra gold, he's going to be able to hit that Q evolve a lot sooner. And we might see Chance hitting um, level experiences uh, quicker as well. So that bot lane is going to be highly volatile. And it just means that if Quaja can just go down there a couple more times, I, I think you're going to see LGD just blow this game wide open from the bottom side and from that enhanced Q damage. So granted for OMG, at least they do have some CS leads. You look mid lane, Ooming has a good 20 CS lead over Uniboy, who's forced to farm underneath the turret once more, giving some free time to uh, tag team with Aki around this dragon. So at least there are some hopes still for OMG. It's not like everything is completely gone and they have no <laughs> options left. Uh, they certainly could come back. I I'm just disappointed because they could have closed the game right yeah. then and there. They could have actually just ended the game. Quay would have been That's so true. far behind with losing double Raptor Camp and double Scuttle, there would be zero chance of comeback. But now LGD had this great opportunity. Good thing for Eric, he still held on to his flash from the earlier skirmish, and Cold's positioning here was actually quite on point. So they're not going to die just yet. However, we could see a potential freeze from LGD. I think that's what they're going to play for with this big wave kind of packing up. And... Uh, Essentially what OMG need to do is they constantly need jungle attention and help here in this bottom lane to kind of prevent uh, the wave from getting into a bad spot. Looks like Aki has snuck himself into the spot lane, waiting to see if Chance and Kramer are going to play a little too confidently and step up a little too far. Nice hook with the play as well on a Chance, so he dies immediately, even with an exhaust on Kramer. Has that chance to be able to get back towards his turret, trying to dodge away from any hook that can come in from gold, he'll be able to survive. Well, top lane, Cult, new, having a little bit of a battle back and forth, but the hyper stacks out of Cult could get the flash. There it is. Going to be able to flash away to survive. Yeah, New wanted to go in because he had that extra ignite, but he didn't even get a chance to use it right there. Nope. Uh, I'm actually surprised that he didn't just burn it. Uh, usually when you see people with unsealed spellbook, they try to do spell rotations, and you, you want to get rid of your early summoners as soon as possible, especially in combat. So I, I'm actually a little bit curious why he held on to that. Maybe he's thinking of an opportunity. Maybe he's trying to coordinate a gank into the top lane. That's why he's still hanging on to the Ignite, because usually in a trade, you would actually just use that Ignite regardless um, if, if it was going to kill or not. So this feels a little weird for me. I see Chance here helping out with the Rift Herald, and that's not a bad play. I'm, I think that's a proper play out of LGD, but it feels like Cold should be the one up there first. They have this push potential bot lane already. They were able to make the gank work there, so they could have easily reset if they wanted to, but... It's not actually the case. Instead, it's going to be LGD first on the pull to try to see if they can look for a dive. Yeah, I'm not sure that this is going to work out. They're trying to go for new because he doesn't have the unstoppable onslaught. Um, but they're trading a lot in the bottom lane. And I, I don't exactly think this is how LGD want to play out this game. I feel like OMG are actually fairly decent with this trade. 
because uh number one e even though they they might be a little bit slower on the first tower getting gold on your jinx is preferable than getting gold on your nar <laughs> that's uh <laughs> yes that's so it's pretty awkward to see LGD with this strategy. Essentially, what they have to do is they have to trade double towers in order for this to work out. But this early into the game, it's, it's going to be fairly difficult, and I don't think they can do it even with the 4v2. Oh, no. The, the Rift Herald was not able to get that second charge. Midair got killed. And Eric, you're right. Look at all this gold that he was able to get in that bot lane. Nearly took down the tier 1 turret. Probably, once you get these minions again, going to be able to actually knock it down. So I think LGD actually over-rotated here. They only needed the jungler to go, and Nu could have taken down that Herald by himself because, uh, I, I'm sorry, Cult and uh, Quay could have taken the Herald by themselves. They over-rotate their entire bot lane, and you also see an experience share coming out from Kramer and Cult. Uh, that's, uh, that's never exactly what you want to see with your carries, having to share experience with someone else. I feel like Eric gets the far superior trade here, and I wouldn't be surprised if Eric is now ahead in gold, even compared to Kramer, with three takedowns. I was about to say, not only do you have the CS lead, but getting nearly full plates by yourself, actually all full plates by yourself, that is a massive influx of gold for this Jinx to feel a lot stronger in this mid game, to be able to keep up with Kramer, as you said. And so I'm very curious to see what this buy is going to entail for OMG and how they're going to be able to use that for the probably ensuing fights that might take place around Dragon. Yeah, it's super interesting. The only reason you would trade this way is you have full confidence in Cult to be able to bully out new to a disgusting degree, essentially. Uh, that's the reason why you want elongated lanes in the game when opposed to having a kill lane in the bot side. Because they actually had bot lane pretty well set up. It was a very strong power spike incoming for Kramer, and Kramer's their main carry. So I, I want to see if they can actually put resources with Quay into Cult's lane, uh, or else that's that's definitely a favorable trade, OMG. <laughs> now look at that, Kraken Slayer already completed, while the one with two kills on your team, still sitting on the Noon Quiver and trying to get up there to be competing with Jinx. Uh, yeah, that's a... Uh... <laughs> LGD doing a bit of out macroing uh, themselves this game around, and now OMG are going in to contest the Drake. They do have the Drake stack, and I believe at this point, with uh, Cult not hit hitting Mega anytime soon, they actually have the better 5v5 as nice. well. They're going for it. Oh, and look at that. They give the free kill to Eric. Oh, that's that's just painful to watch. You know, Eric definitely knew that there were members around that section of the map. They saw Jinx just coming into the jungle a second ago, and he still fakes checks that. So, this, this basically means that LG's macro decisions just fall completely apart and they're looking for the scraps at this point they need to find a comeback in some point and eric might just gave and give them the opportunity two alts though were used on eric and he still survived they had the flash had the lantern you have cold near vine that was a bit ambitious by lgd they thought that eric was out of position but it's still a jinx with thresh hmm <laughs> yeah this is uh this is, this is some vintage LGD macro coming out. <laughs> not, not really sure what the uh, objective is here. Um, honestly, with an elongated lane, I wouldn't have mind if Cole just stayed in his lane and continue to get an advantage. Let Cyan rotate. It's totally fine. You're going to get 30 plus CS. And if he didn't die there, and if he didn't rotate, it would have been a 40 plus CS lead. If you think about that, with them with the lane they have set up, that would have made a little bit more sense. But instead, they roam Cult down while he doesn't have the Mega Narbar to contest, and he just dies. So, kind of a weird thing to do. I want to see right now if LGD actually try to freeze the top lane. I think that's actually a decent strategy. They do have vision advantage over this quadrant of the map. So if they just hold here, they can actually deny uh, an entire lane from OMG getting resources. Uh, but never mind, they push it right back. <laughs> I was going to say, my problem, though, is that you're trying to freeze lanes, which stalls out the game against the Tristana Jinx game. And they're just getting bigger and bigger as we continue. It seems that if you don't do anything soon for LGD, that it just might become a game where you're not ever able to touch Ooming and Eric. They're able to do so much damage and kite you back every single time that you've never really had a chance to begin with. But you would be able to just kill the Tristana outright. I, I feel yeah. like that's pre preferable. And I, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't actually try to hold on to the top side. 
because uh, they had full vision advantage in topside. They had rotational advantage, and if they just held their ground, there was no way Cold would actually be able to sweep themselves. So instead, they're going for another trade where they're splitting resources amongst Cult and amongst Kramer while one carry on OMG is getting a full tower. Uh, yeah. I, I actually don't think this is preferable to, 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 the, no. to my original trade. The, the upside no. of this, though, again, though, we do have to mention the upside of this trade is that they are pinching down on new super hard. But again, new is a scion, and there is there are limitations to how far you can put a scion behind. Once he has that first item, it it, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. <laughs> Not at all. He's gonna be confident to stand in front of everybody, and since you only have one Kraken Slayer completed, not really having the damage coming in from Uniboy to be able to tear apart a tank just yet, he's going to be able to absorb so much pressure for the team. Colt is the one they've put most of the gold onto. They're trying yes. to fall back onto a split push capability that just doesn't seem like the normal strategy that LGD usually rely on. A hundred percent no. The, the, the way you would play this out, I think most other teams would play it, was you get that serrated Dirk early onto Kramer, and then you just pill, uh, and you just play for skirmish and kill with Hecarim. But instead, they're going for a late game uh, strategy, and now Uniboy might be in trouble. Does have oh, beautiful! Safe. Nice out of cold. Look at that. He was able to pick him off perfectly, so they can pick up the kill with the Rift Herald too, and knock that down right immediately too. Yeah, and. Uh, again, I hate to repeat on this, but this really does stem from LGD giving up the top side. They had Colt in the top side with full vision advantage. They gave that over, gave the tower plus Herald for Colt trading a tower on the bottom side. And OMG with a beautiful hook play coming out from Colt. That was pixel perfect on the right moment, just using that Thresh uh, play to interrupt the Shifting Sands over the wall to get a double wall middle tower play and now the map is wide open from omg there's almost zero pick potential for lgd and despite cold having the cs advantage in the bot lane he can't even split push anymore they, they've lost too much of the map for nar to actually be a split push threat yeah it's just a bit awkward out of lgd and omg i gotta give them credit with how they played a lot of this game where they might have made one mistake in the jungle where they didn't have cold at the right time cold is making up for that with this play oh that was so good to see uniboy even pops the emperor's divide a little bit early and cold is still able to get over the wall that was a great stutter step from cold not even just the flash play but also the awareness that he had to take the death sentence a little bit later than he would have liked to that stutter was just uh, this, this is really showing why cold is such a great support to look at and why he has that veteran status trying to see if he can continue to support the team and get them carried as it is going to be a fight around the dragon to pull and kill on a chance with the rest of lgd using the emperor's divide to try to be able to escape from the fight they gave up the dragon completely that is soul point now picked up by omg that was a disgusting lilting lullaby four man on the swirl seed into the crowd control everyone on lgd has to back out all of their carries are tagged right there and there was no hope that they couldn't contest just, just beautiful play coming out from OMG, and we have to remember, this is your premier team fighting 5v5 composition going in into 22-minute Dragon Soul. OMG have lined this up beautifully. It's really nice to see out of this team. We've, Unfortunately for them, it's so late into the season when they've already been knocked out, and you're like, where was this OMG earlier? That this is a kind of play that gives you hope when you look towards summer and how they might be able to fix the mistakes of spring, work together, have that communication down, and be able to win. Right now, underneath the turret, Chance was trying to get a pick on Eric, but he has to go golden to be able to survive, and he's still alive. Eric is perfectly happy. Aki shows up, too, with the help of New on the other side. What are you going to do, Uniboy? You're taking way too much damage, and it's going to be cold. Dying out cold. It's New who picks up the kill with Chance on the other side, completely zoned away by cold, so they get the kill for Aki with New doing so much to absorb so much pressure out of Kramer. They can't peel back. They have to run for the hills. The Flash come in and get so slow on a Kramer using Killer Instinct to escape, but he doesn't really get out of there. It's a double kill picked up by Ooming. And Ooming are showing up 
massively on this Tristana. We talked about this. Ooming, in these two weeks, they, he has been given the red side last pick, and he's been able to make it work. This is how he wants to play aggressively in lane, having lane priority and keeping himself away from the control mages. When you see him on a streak like this, it, it just really shows you that sometimes you have to be having the guts to go against the meta. You have to be able to play your own style. LGD right here, they know they're on a timer. They have to make things work, but Chance just can't find the right play. Actually gets the dredge lines interrupted, and now it's OMG's chance to go full on. Uniboy doesn't have to flash because of that earlier pick. He dies instantly. I'm not really sure what uh, uh, LGD actually want to do there on the side. It looks like they want to get the kill onto Chance, but they're way too late. And another great play play from Cold just means that LGD get routed. Exactly. It's a unfortunate scenario for the team. They've fallen so far behind now. Even if it only looks like it's a 3,500 gold bleed for OMG with what their composition wants to do. They're finding it difficult to find those picks, those plays to be able to make this all work. But all the gold is going into proper members on OMG. Even though Eric's only sitting at zero and one, look at the gold that they've been able to get over for Umi, or even just the gold over for Eric with these assists to stay ahead of Kramer. Uh, it's just so weird to see the macro out here. Pretty much Cult is the only winning point left. We did see in the gold graph earlier that uh, Kramer, despite going 2-0-1, lost his gold lead at 10 minutes when they did the Herald trade. So as soon as they gave over 5 plates and first brick gold to Eric, there was no longer any real kill threat coming out from Kramer. He was very far behind in the mythics and his item progression in general. And it, it just seems very misguided for LGD to kind of play around this way. I, I expected them to play for Kramer, play for that... Uh, serrated Dirk into enhanced Ikathian Rain kill combo, but they play for the top side. They play for the top side, they shared gold between Kramer and Colts, and it, it just feels like they gave away any sort of momentum they got in the early game. They just handed it over to OMG, they handed over map pressure to OMG, and OMG said thank you. Fine, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> Even when you look at Colts items, not like he's that far ahead of yeah. new. Not like it's really worked out well for them regardless. Mid lane, you see that there's nearly a half item lead for Ooming on this Tristana over Azir. Jungle, you see a similar kind of lead for the side of OMG where it feels like everything has worked to plan for them. They've been able to get that gold that they need to into the right places, especially with Kramer, who's sitting at 2-1-1. One, one. Had those early kills from the bad invade by OMG that you thought was going to be enough to be able to override what had happened earlier into the game, it was completely mitigated by, unfortunately, losing out on all that plate gold given to Eric. Yeah, just, just macro coming back to bite LGD in the behind. Uh, we do have to mention the stakes here for LGD. If they drop to OMG, that means the most wins they can get is 7, and it would come down to effectively game difference uh, with the other teams. It doesn't mean they're out completely yet, but they would have to have 2-0 series against RNG, IG, and that sounds yeah. like a very tall order to, to ask for. So um, it definitely for LGD, the best that you can do here is keep your hopes alive and go for that eight series win. But if they drop here, it's next to impossible oh, as we have Sun coming in. Was they able to get the Onslaught of Shadows, but still got the double knockup. New is doing so much to be able to disengage at the moment that they're not feeling confident to try to fight back against OMG. The jump comes in. Nice play, though, to be able to disengage that. And now they feel confident. Little Thing Lullaby onto three members looking to be able to get the sleep that they need to, but they have the damage in the back line onto Quay, trying to be able to escape with Chance, barely getting the heal to survive. Nobody's died just yet. Finally, we see the kills coming through for OMG, taking down the members of LGD, no longer excited. Now you've got the momentum coming in from OMG as they chase down Kramer trying to run away, but they know that they got the TP play. Kramer's trying to get the red buff on the way out, but he is cut off. There's no way, no base to be able to return to. Even news here to make sure that he's got nowhere to go. Shouting at him. There it is, oh. taking down Kramer. And they have minions mid lane if they wanted to, but they know Baron is a better option. Four man dead for LGD. Baron wide open. And OMG. This is a team fight composition that is getting online early. That was about as one-sided as you could possibly have hoped for. Colt still had a great Meganar ultimate into the backline, but it just wasn't enough. The damage difference coming in from Ooming, coming in from Eric, who was completely untouched during that entire team fight, was just way too much of a difference. 
and uh, it, it looks like OMG are going to be able to mop this series up very easily. Quay even tries to get away, but actually allows his mid laner to get tagged by the ultimate. So not a great start here. I would still like to commend Colt from getting a very good Mega Nar ultimate. He was super patient with that play, just waiting to go back in and disengage. He gets Tristana with that. But, but just look at the front line here. It, it really isn't... Um, it's so much of a different level in frontlining right now that Colt can't really hold up. Well, New, you look at him, he's still half HP, he's still dishing out damage, and Ooming has that um, has that ravenous hunter to keep himself alive throughout that 5v5. The wild thing to me, too, is that Kramer was essentially wailing away on New and doing nearly no damage just not being able to get through this tank because they're not in that position for the late game you'd like Kramer to normally be on. Especially with how the gold has been allocated at the moment, it's just not enough to be able to beat OMG who have a draft that we would have thought LGD would have drafted for. It's pretty much the opposite of what we'd expect. OMG just taking away what LGD are known for. It looks like LGD is his comp. It's a little bit all over the place and we really haven't seen this split. LGD try to play for a 4-1 with their top laner. That really hasn't been their best go-to. Uh -oh. And now the game could be on the ending touches. As, oh, that was a good block that from Colt. Oh. I like that, but unfortunately, now that Quay has to go back to base, that means with the Baron buff that they can start knocking down the turret in the bot lane. No touchdown right here. LGD, um, they have cleared the uh, super minions right here, so uh, not not the super minions, sorry, the, the the empowered cannons at the very least in the bottom side. So that will force OMG to walk a little bit further into their base, giving that potential Emperor's Divide flank. What we need to see right now is Emperor's Divide into Mega Nar Ultimate. That's pretty much the only way the LGD can even win this team fight. It, it's super difficult to pull off. They have to synchronize their AoEs perfectly. But in theory, we could have that coming out, especially if Mew's trying to come in on the flank and leaves the back line exposed. Yeah, but they're able to get the inhibitor mid lane, and it's only going to be a matter of time before the supers show up. They still have the Baron buff for a little bit longer. 40 seconds remain on that, and that means they have plenty of time to continue to whittle away at that inhibitor turret in the bot lane. Yeah, they do have to pull the trigger pretty soon. Uh, as you mentioned, the cannon minion coming oh. down, and OMG are the ones going in. Yeah, it's not even LGD, even though Colt went in the back line, he died too quickly to be able to make any work as Ooming trying to see if he can get the damage on Kramer, but he might have jumped a little bit too far trying to see if he can stay alive. They're going to be able to get the kills they need to, but it's only too late that they finally took down Ooming. Everyone else on LGD is dead with only Univoy underneath the Nexus turrets trying to survive. But now that they take down the inhibitor in the bot lane, OMG should be able to end the game. No response from LGD. That was new crashing in from the side lanes. Uh, we saw LGD lose their carries pretty early on, and in that fight, there was no summoners for Kramer. OMG are going to take this one down in under 28 minutes, shattering LGD's hope for an easy pathway to playoffs. Yeah, trying to deny that miracle run out of LGD. Unipoy pretty much standing on the steps, hoping to be able to get back in, but it's too late. Game one for OMG. They're replicating what they did against Team WE and getting a game one victory, but this time they'd like to be able to close it out and get a 2-0 victory over LGD.